Hey, I'm Nick. I'm Steph. This is episode three of Dream Daddies. Dream Daddies. I believe I can get you through the night. <laughs> That's a different song. So when last we left our dad, he was just going to bed? Yes. It's a new day. It's a new day. A new bunch of dads to meet. I hope so. I think I figure we meet the last two and last then we start two. figuring out what this game actually is. Okay. I wake up to a text from an unknown number. <gasps> Rise and shine, early birds. Still want to work out? This is Craig, by the way. Smiley Smart face. face. Holy crap, it's 6 a.m.? Who does 6 a.m. anymore? Without realizing it, I drift back to sleep. Did we make an agreement to work out? Did, how does he have my number if we didn't hang out since college? Maybe we've just number? had the same number. The time. It seems like the kind of lazy, bullshit, bad dad thing we'd do. Yeah. Whoops, must have winked back out. I checked my phone again. <clears throat> hey, bud, still want to get your swole on? I'm ready to tear up the track. Hit me up. Okay. Do you still find this dad <laughs> to be your pick of the dads? Because he is rapidly getting on my nerves. He's very beautiful. Though. Using the word swole, like 20 points off. Right yeah, there. that's a lot of points. That's a lot of points. I don't <laughs> want to tear up a track. I don't even <laughs> want to hit him up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Points for attributing this particular stereotype of language to this character, though. I'm enjoying his difference from the other dads. Like, he is proper. Yeah. He's Jim bro. He's genuinely annoying. I guess I kind of want to hang out with the first dad then. He seemed the most stable. Lumberja except the, lumberjack dad. Lumberjack dad, except he was very competitive. God, the last thing I want to do right now is work out. But it is Craig. I do want to catch up. The things we do for love. We assume we're yet to decide whether or not anyone in this game is actually gay or bi. Oh, wouldn't that be awkward? If part of the thing was just like most of these dads weren't even All gay. of these dads are 100% straight. Yep. Every dad is straight except for our dad. Our dad is cracking on every oh. single dad to be shut down. No, these dads are flirting with us. It is fitting in my theory, which is uh, Amanda is looking for the dream daddy. <laughs> right. Go to the gym or go back to sleep? <clears throat> Jim, 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 Jim. Hey, my man. Oh, I hate who we become when we talk to Craig. What do you reckon our gym outfit would be? <clears throat> that. For sure. It's a suit. Just that, but with no <laughs> sleeves. <laughs> uh, I need a few minutes to wake up, but let's meet at 20. After a few seconds, another text comes in. Sure thing. Meet me at the gym. The gym is called the gym. I assume like. so, yeah. yeah. I stretch my bones creak. I gotta stop falling asleep on the couch. I wanna throw off my blanket and, hey, wait a minute. I don't remember falling asleep with a blanket. I don't remember falling asleep on a couch. We went to bed. Oh. We went to the bedroom at the end. We did. Da, da, da. <laughs> I'm sure it was Amanda. Amanda must have tucked <laughs> me in after I fell asleep. Uh, so, so, I mean, somehow, do we sleepwalk? How do we get to the couch? I don't understand how we got to the couch. Anyway, the neighborhood is quiet and serene this early in the morning. Birds chirp and the grass is still wet with dew. Surprisingly, the gym is pretty crowded. I spot Craig standing out front, stretching, of course. He spots me and waves enthusiastically. <gasps> hey, bro, good morning! No kid. Same clothes, though. Yeah. Hey, good to see you. Man, I'm definitely not as pumped up as he is. Maybe I should have had a coffee before I left. <laughs> you ready to kick some butt? Gotta stay puzzy, dude. With your help, I am. Help! I like the middle one. You want it with your help, like, I am? That's oh, because it's flirty. It is yeah. flirty. Will you like, spot me? Yeah, spot me. Spot like, me. And like maybe gently caress my biceps as oh, yeah. I lift them. Yeah, yeah. Or just bench me. Just bench. Just bench Horatio. He's cool. tiny enough. Uh, with your help, I am. Or he could do that thing where you like lift someone's leg up and then like smush your pelvis into them. Oh like, yeah, as yeah, a yeah. Stretch. Yeah, totally. He you could know? teach us how to play tennis and do the like reach around oh, and yeah. hold the racket at the same time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all those things. <laughs> reach around. <clears throat> I get the feeling this is going to be less of me kicking butt and more the gym kicking my butt. But I can handle it with you here. Yeah, oh, that's nice. Dude, bro, that like means a lot. You added a lag in there, and I think it was character appropriate. Thanks. We made the hearts come out of him. That's pretty good. Look at that smile. Look at him. We head to the gym, and I'm immediately intimidated. All of these people look like they could break me in half. This is, okay, this is definitely adjusted to the body type we chose. Because if we chose Big Buff Dad, they wouldn't say that. We need to re-roll as Big Buff Dad to see. Yeah. Yeah. It would totally be, I, I see my people. They flock around me. I am their Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> He high fives and finger guns all the cool jocks in the room. They look like they could and would steal my lunch money to spend on protein shakes. Come on, bud. Let's warm up. 
We head over to the treadmills, start walking. Okay, I can walk. Walking is good. This is a decent place to be. Walking. So, uh, I know we're on treadmills. Yes. And those over there are ellipticals? Very good. What is all this other stuff? <laughs> they might look a little scary, but I guarantee that all of them serve a specific purpose for building muscle mass. I so regret <laughs> ever picking Craig Dan. <laughs> I don't care about your BMI or BDI or BFG. <laughs> Do you reckon though, like somebody who plays this game who's like heaps into the gym is like, I'm so glad there's someone here for me. You're right, they've never had anyone in video games that speak to that whole do bro buff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the gym junkie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You like know? you don't you don't hear I can't remember the last time Swole was in video games. That's true. Or talking about muscle mass. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> that's true. It's nice that those guys finally get something. I watched as a dude in a muscle T flexes a muscle oh, I didn't I know Oh, I bet you did. <laughs> on a machine I think was once used to process grain into flour. <laughs> That's funny. The writing is great in this game. It's pretty good. It's, it's pretty awesome. Good. Like, there isn't a single line that I've been like, oh, that was a bit naff. Like, they're all really, like, witty and current and feels natural as well. Yeah, it's There's charming. It's good banter. It's good bant. Good mm. bant. Uh, why, is that, why is that guy doing that to himself? That's a good question. What do you think he's doing? Oh, oh patronizing. No, I'm not here for that, man. I'm here because I want to bang you. I'm not here to actually learn. He's training to crush people's skulls with his thighs. So putting in Craig's mind by saying this, thighs and people's heads near those thighs. Oh, yeah. So you know what I mean? Like planting yeah, okay. subliminally. Yep, yep. Using medieval torture as a device. So if he's into BDSM. Praying to some sort of pain god. I like the first one. You're right. He's trying to make his thighs so strong he could crush people's skulls with them. That was what we said. <laughs> That's pretty much the only reason I work out. Ayo! And then it's just love hearts. Oh! 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 Eggplant! 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 You know what the eggplant means in emoji speak. Did an eggplant come out? So many eggplants. Were they came all out. eggplants? Yeah. And, oh my god! And hearts. It was right. I'm so good at flirting with dads. <gasps> Man, that confirms it for us as players, at least, that he's gay because he would not be using the eggplant be, emoji. He would not be just a, like eggplants erupting oh. from his body. Yep. Oh no, Craig's turning up the speed. I better do the same. Okay. Oh my god. This Hardcore gonna, float this time. This is gonna end badly. This is the test. Uh, how uh, how long have you been doing the buff thing? Couple of years. And and what do you do when you're not dadding or or working or buffing? Oh, a coach between softball team. That still counts as both dadding and buffing. Uh, I keep busy. What do you do for fun? This is the test. God, our dad is so bad. I love learning. I try to live my life as close to a Jimmy Buffett song as possible. I check out my hot bod. I check out my hot bod. I mean, I... For fun, I check out my hot bod. What's a Jimmy Buffett song? Jimmy Buffett's a singer, a very, like, very, um, yeah, Google. I, I guess I'm saying when we're talking to this man, yeah. Jimmy Buffett is not a reference we want to make. Okay, cool. And I love learning. I think it's just a sad, pathetic answer. But it could say I love learning new things like going to the gym and getting buff. That's true. I, I'm just going to say, I check out my hot bug. Just think about this for a second. Like as a joke response. What do you do in your spare time? Like if I had a choice, I could watch a movie. Or I just stand naked in front of a mirror, like, and I just stare at it. Like that's what he's saying. So, which are we? Do we love learning, or do we check out hot buds? I would do either the first or the last one. I'll leave it up to you. Can we do the last one? Yes. <laughs> I spend most of my time in front of the mirror, admiring my Adonis-like figure that I've worked so hard to sculpt. Again, putting into How's his. How's he going to react to this? Yeah, because like this he's is gonna obviously react a badly. lie. We're going to take back all the D's. No, I reckon it's just going to be one D, and it's going to be one eggplant where we want it. He liked it. He loved it. Hearts. By that I mean lay horizontal and watch bad television. Oh. I mean, this is not We're bad. We're being honest. Yeah, and also, like, I'm shaming the guy for not going to the gym. I don't go to the gym. <laughs> this is exactly what I do. I'm yeah. just saying, when you want to get in a relationship, you have to lie to the person that you want to date. <laughs> We're jogging now. Oh, God, we're jogging now. I like it. So the whole time we've been having this chat, Craig has just occasionally leaned over and pressed the, like, speed button. <laughs> 
I look over to Craig, who hasn't even broken a sweat. How is he doing this so effortlessly? I'm dying. I can feel my life force draining through every orifice of my body. Again, though, putting in mind orifices. I was about to say, the use of the word orifice is never casual. It's never a casual word. Like... There's no good orifice. I don't feel like that was the appropriate use of that word either. Because an orifice is like a spice, like a hole. Yeah. When you say sweat draining through er every orifice... You're like, it, you're talking pores, and I wouldn't refer to each individual pore as, as an, an orifice. orifice. No, neither would I. No. I have... Are you counting the holes in I think in I have body? seven orifices. <laughs> but none of them should sweat, ideally. <laughs> Hey, remember when my fish died in college? Where's this going? No, I don't like this story. <laughs> oh my god, he's really bumping up the speed again! I guess I better do it too! Alright, yeah. Oh, okay, he's doing it. Oh, this is fast. This is very fast. Yeah, stack it. And we were like at that party, and you vowed to make me feel better? You told me to create a distraction, so of course, I do a sick keg stand and get everyone cheering. Oh god, he hasn't grown up. And then I. <laughs> Try to steal a fish from a fish tank at the party with my bare hands, like an idiot. And then you drop the fish and it's flopping around and you panic. So you run out to be post keg stand with a dying dirty fish in your hands that you scooped out the ground and you're yelling at me that we have to leave because you just murdered an innocent animal. Yeah, it's, this is a story about how you killed a fish. So we're like running out of the frat party with a fish and trying to give it mouth to mouth resuscitation. And then we get him home and we get him to a bowl of water, but the prognosis was grim. And the next day, he's <laughs> alive and well. Hey! They never did catch the great fish thieves of Grand Ridge U. And they never, <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> I shoot off the end of the treadmill and crash into the wall. Jesus, that hurts. Oh, I could have seen that coming. It's and I'm cool. glad we didn't take the Lord's name in vain around Minister Dad. That's true. Dude, bro, are you okay? Craig offers me a hand and looks, over, looks me over for injuries. I'm fantastic. I managed to stand up and rub my back. Doesn't hurt now, but I'm sure it will later. <laughs> you don't have to push yourself like that. Always know your limits. <laughs> this step is so real. <laughs> I just feel like, I feel like you're in an 80s movie giving me life advice. I know, it just went, it very quickly went Bill and Ted, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> it totally did. Well, I think I might call our gym adventure here. You sure, dude? Yeah, dude. All right, well, here. I brought you this. Oh, what if it's the dead fish? <laughs> Craig hands me a shaker bottle full of a thick green liquid. I stare at it with what must be apparent distaste. It's a protein shake, bro. Oh, thank you. <sighs> Do you see a future for these two? No! Like, but like, there are, there are relationships where like one person's a gym <sighs> junkie and the other person isn't. But I think in those relationships, one person doesn't find the other person abhorrent to be around which is what I do with Craig. You should never be in a relationship, and this will mean Horatio will never be in a relationship, <laughs> but you should never be in a relationship with someone who you truly believe like is so far better than you. Like he has so much self-confidence issues that like he's gonna spend his whole relationship going, I don't deserve to be with this man. Yeah, and right. And they're so, they're so on a different plane. And it will negatively affect the relationship whether he believes that or not. Exactly. See, he might, he might feel the same way, but he has a positive attitude, but Horatio will sabotage this relationship. Because that's just the kind of scumbag he is. <laughs> not scumbag, he's just, he didn't he's get enough bit, love from his parents. He's a bit insecure. He didn't have a good dad. It's true. I take a small sip. It's actually delicious. Maybe there is hope for them. Maybe they bond over smoothies. Wow, this is really good. And good for you. It's my special recipe. I'm pretty proud of it. Let me know if you ever want to work out again. Maybe we can try running around the neighborhood. If treadmills aren't your speed, no pun intended, bro. You're also like the turtle from Finding Nemo. <laughs> or any Ninja Turtle. Or any Ninja Turtle. In fact, all the turtles. Uh, good one. I'm going to go put some ice on this everything. I'll see you around. I leave the gym feeling ashamed. Oh, God. <laughs> See, this is what I'm talking about. Craig used to order delivery from the pizza place across the street from our dorm, and now I can run circles around me. Literally. Man, I gotta work on this dad bod. Do you think that we just saw there the first hint of proper choice, which was Craig saying, hit me up if you want to come to the gym again? Once we meet all the dads, then we start deciding what we're gonna do with our time. Yeah, so, right. So like we could decide to go back to the gym with Craig yeah. and so develop if we, the relationship. Yeah, so if we enjoyed our time with Craig, we could, we could invest more time into the Craig relationship. Exactly. Which we did not and will not. Okay.
right? Yeah, like I want to spend more time with Muso Dad. Muso For sure. Dad. Muso Dad, FTW. I get home and lie down on the couch. It hurts to move. Oh God, I'm so old. <laughs> oh no, I must have fallen asleep. What time is it? Shoot, it's 3.55. I'm supposed to be in Amanda's school in five minutes. Teacher Dad. Oh, uh, yeah. Which means... Vampire Dad? Or abusive dad? Is the teacher? Oh no, there's another dad with a mustache. I frantically put on some clean clothes, apply a generous amount of deodorant, and run out the door. Such an unclean dad. Oh, he's a gamer though. There was a controller there. I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and send me on my way. I'm barely awake and feeling pretty haggard, but hopefully nobody will notice. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103 or 108? I spot a youth standing in his locker and I approach him to help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? <gasps> it's you! Uh, uh? <laughs> like circa, circa 2004? This, uh, when yeah, I was 2000. A young boy, oh, stop, my father stop, stop, took stop. Me into the city. No, I'm gonna cry and then put on mascara. I learned it, not mascara. I didn't wear mascara. Yep. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but it just seems like mascara is not what you want to put on when you want to draw attention to yourself. It's not like, oh wow, look at his eyelashes. <laughs> uh, the youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Good. Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Mr. Who? He's good. Mr. Vega. I don't know. Have you tried the exit? Oh my god, you smummy piece of shit. Okay, wise guy, you gonna help me or not? <sighs> Fine. Up those stairs and to the left. Can't miss him. I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's classroom anywhere. After a couple of minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. This is the only other person besides the kids and the, who, uh, the, and who the, isn't a dad. And, yeah, yeah, that we've seen animated in this game. True. Like there've been crowds referenced, and you we haven't seen them. You think he's gonna play? <gasps> he's either the son of one of the dads, or he wouldn't be a dad. Potential boyfriend for our girl. Oh yeah, they're about the same age. She's ready to go for college. He's ready to drop out. It's all lining up. She would never date someone like him. You'd think so, but girls can be crazy. That is that true. Age. That is you true. Know? That's very true. Make some poor choices. Yep, and hey. <laughs> what? <laughs> Low Ridge Rodway! <laughs> My Chemical Romance Lead Senior Gerard Way. I get back to where that low rent Gerard Way is standing, <laughs> fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. I love that he knows who Gerard Way is, though. Like, props. So, heaps of props. We are so ahead of this game. It was it clearly written by someone and we are zigging. of our generation. Though. Someone as cool as us. Yeah. Oh. There he is, uh, Professor Dad. He's so tall. Here's my question. What's this voice? See, I would have gone British with this you guy. Go, well, to be fair, you kind of went... I don't feel like you went full British with the last one. I feel like you went fancy. Like, as opposed to... Like, I feel like fancy British is the only British I can do. Cockney. Welsh. Oh, Welsh is... Scottish. Welsh is tough. Ah, Lucian. Don't you have a third period to get to? I kind of went to Irish there at the end. Every, t every time you try to do Scottish, it goes Irish. Yeah, once you get past... Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. just Irish. All right, let's make him Irish. Lucian, why don't, don't you, don't you have a third period to get to? <laughs> <laughs> it does not match him at all, but it's the best. <laughs> don't you have a third period to get to? Oi, I, don't you dare to dare to dare to Come on, you're all the other men. We gotta see you slip between, effortlessly between emo American and... Irish, whatever that Caribbean. <laughs> Fine, Mr. Vega. Wow. Now I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare at him as I walk by. We're not cool. <laughs> you must be Horatio. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? <laughs> this period. I can't. I can hear you sounding out all the letters that need to be dropped from the sentence before you start. Yeah. You, you must be Horatio. This period! Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small student desks in the back. 
I might get stuck in this. Unlikely. You're the tiniest bean known to man. <laughs> All right, where were we? Now, who can tell me about the unre unreliability of the narrator and G.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Roy? Why are you so good at this? Like, <laughs> this is really weird. You haven't fumbled one of these. I can't even nail me. <laughs> yes, Colin. Colin stands up and does that thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Classic. How old are these kids? The whole class erupts in laughter. All right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. Now, Holden Caulfield was an unreliable narrator in the sense that... <laughs> the bell for the end of the period rings. All the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. <laughs> By the way, Stephanie, just letting you know right now, this is who we're going to end up with. <laughs> <laughs> because this is in, if they get romantic or sexy in any way, the dialogue will Ooh, be... Oh, hi. Oh, gee whiz. Oh, golly. <laughs> Remember to do the reading. Read and, and ask and answer the response question on the page at 194 in your textbook. <laughs> Nobody's listening. <laughs> or not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and signs, by the way, the Irish man's name is Mr. Vega. <laughs> Middle schoolers, am I right? Don't you teach high schoolers? Both, you know, budget cuts. Right. Thanks so much for coming in. No pro- uh, so, I mean, no problem, Mr. Vega. Please. Call me Hugo. Hugo Irish? It's French. Yeah, but you know, they're all the same, you know, massive islands up there. Sure. <clears throat> I don't normally do these impromptu parent teacher meetings. But as I'm sure you know, Amanda's a very bright student and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. Did we know that she's a troubled teen? It's that kid <clears throat> in the hallway. Oh, it is. Anything for love. Maybe there is no two Emmas. She's a delinquent. Maybe there's just one Gerard. What's going on? Amanda's never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments, and she's been doing rather poorly on tests. I'd normally chalk it up to senioritis, but... You sound unsure about your diagnosis there, <laughs> senioritis. Professor Vega. This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. Well, I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? No, it's not. Not a good dad. We just moved. She's fine. She has a tendency to bottle things up. I feel like she has a tendency to bottle things up as like probably an overshare for the teacher, maybe? Yeah. I wouldn't just say she... I would say we just moved. Well, yeah, because that's the truth. We don't know if she's fine. Obviously, she's not. Yeah. Well, we just moved recently, but it was only the other side of town, and Amanda was more excited about it than I was. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal, and she'd appreciate your guidance. If she keeps heading down this road... Ooh. What? I know how important art school is to her, and I'd hate to see her miss out on the scholarship money that she clearly deserves. America's terrible education system. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. By the way, no flirting so far. Just like no, solid. He's like, well, this I is mean, an actual human we're talking being. about <laughs> our child, and she has problems. I feel like now's not the time. Or is it? The next line is going to be Take off your pants. I reckon he might say something to the effect of, like, you can talk to me any time about this. Oh, right. If you're having or, trouble raising your daughter, let me yeah, know. Yeah, like opening the gate for like future interaction. Interesting. <clears throat> any time. I mean, that was like less than I was that, hoping for. But, but, that, sure. but that was it. On oh, my way oh, out. Wait, wait, wait. I stopped thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Take off your pants. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hugo. Yes? They ever catch that right? <laughs> Dad jokes all around. <laughs> oh, that is so bad. But the commitment to that being a real, that was a real choice. Yep. How's he going to react? He loved it. He loves it. Literary that. joke. Yes. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. God rest us all. Just saying. Like, classic teenage behaviour though, really. Yeah, lost a parent, like, lashing out a little bit. What can you expect? Yeah. They ever catch that rye? That's the smoothest he's ever been. It's true. That's the most just like, nailed it moment in this game. True. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. <clears throat> so, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually gossiped about our celebrity crushes. Ooh. Ooh. So, you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? Like, Italian film director? I'm just guessing. He's a chef. He's an American, American chef. chef, writer, 
He's a celebrity chef. Right, okay. So he's got a show. Specifically pizza. So our dad's into cooking shows and pizza. It was a very productive meeting. <clears throat> I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Pizza, maybe? <laughs> sure thing. Food court? Yeah, we've got to go out. We're not. Oh, well, I was about to say we're not meeting dads at home, but that's not true. They just rock up with food. We're going to meet more dads. Does that sound good to you? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can a dad take his daughter to the mall? Will you buy me things? Oh, God. I will buy you a thing. Singular thing. Sounds like a deal to me. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes, when a kid gets older, they find they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay, because sometimes that's just what kids do. Is this how you plan to bring up this conversation with your future son? This is, I don't have a future son, I have a current son. But I mean like your son in the future, in the future. when he's older. Yes it is. <laughs> and that's okay, but sometimes it's, it's good to have the parents' perspective, you know? Uh, because maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is it's good to share, sweetie. Love you. All right. That good chat. Good, that good was chat. a good lead. Good See chat. See how she responds. It's a good chat. Have you been reading my tweets? <laughs> you have a Twitter? Oh, bad dad. Bad dad. You have a Twitter. He should not only know that she has a Twitter, he should be friends with her on Facebook. He should have her Facebook password. He should be reading her diary. This is what you do as a parent. Stephanie! What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said you haven't been participating in class and you're not turning things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Senioritis and all that. So she knows this word too. Everyone knows this word. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I, Amanda, she's still texting. I want you to know that you can talk to me about anything. Uh-huh. I can tell whatever it is. She doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. <laughs> Uh, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Oh, she's given up. Oh God, this is terrible. She's given up. This is terrible. Why would you, why would you bring that up? Yep. Oh God, we've got to sew offside. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Do you wish you studied a little harder? <laughs> <laughs> Amanda keeps texting. She but starts. subjective, you know. It's that's like it, like... man. That's I could just take it. You know, that was the worst part about art school was, uh, art class, sorry. I was great at the written stuff and I was rubbish at making art. Oh. And I would try to get away with that whole, what are you talking about, it's subjective. And they were like, this is a pottery class where you're supposed to make a bowl and this is an exploded piece of clay. <laughs> like that's all this is. What's so funny? Uh, it's, uh, I don't think you'd get it. Oh no. She's closing herself off, man. Like he said. We used to be like this. He said, she has a tendency to bottle things up. Okay. Who are you texting? Hmm. Noah. Who's Noah? My Kim. You think so? Oh, for sure. Only other person. Oh, wait. He would have a name like Noah. Uh, or was his name Colin? Colin? Why am I thinking the word Colin? I thought that maybe uh, Irish dad said Colin. Are you. Uh, maybe. Colin is in my head for some reason. I'm sure we'll meet <clears throat> Noah at some point. Will, was it Colin? <laughs> All right then, we, we still don't know the answer because <laughs> you're editing this in the future, but now the audience does. Uh, who's Noah? My friend. Oh my God, this entire time. Does he go to your school? Yep. Do you like Noah? What? No! Dad! Ugh! Oh God, poor Noah. I mean, jeez. Oh my God, um, play, okay, calm down, you drama queen. <laughs> Why would you, <clears throat> I mean this, ugh. Gross. Sorry, sorry, I'm just asking. I mean, this sounds like she's deflecting. You think? Like. Big time. Dad, he's just my friend. Guys and girls can be friends, he's my friend. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. <laughs> well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. <gasps> to the mall then! We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping centre with a couple of different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering teens. A hot security guard? I don't think that was a dad that was a security guard. Secret dad. <gasps> Secret dad. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Alright. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. Except us, baby. Yeah, yeah, we're rolling in it. 
<laughs> what are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar, bread with cheese on it, or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? She takes my hand with a grin. Hey, we're back on track. See, food brings people back together. It did, food, but, but don't you think that it seems like we're just eating our feelings? Yes. Are you okay with that? I mean, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> oh, hashtag real. <laughs> <laughs> it would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We double are... entendre. Oh, yeah. Is an entendre like specifically sexual or just double meaning in a word? That's a good quick. To Google! <laughs> a double entendre is a particular way of wording that is devised to be understood in two ways having a double meaning. Okay, so often it is, but it doesn't have to be. Great. But I think innuendo is. We order a huge pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table, dig in. Oh, I like the table's rickety. I like the teenager's high. These are bad, very bad. But also, strangely delicious. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. Oh, now I want nachos. I know, I'm feeling it too. Mm. So, something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Dad. Please. <sighs> Which meme? Just memes in general. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time the meme gets to you, Dad, all us youths have already done the joke to death. I'm glad at least that she acknowledges that they get less funny every time they get shared. Mm. She's not like memes are the greatest thing ever. Yeah, because I feel like most people think they get more funny. And what's worse than that is that movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on the meme train. But just based on how long it takes to make them, the meme will be long dead by the time it comes out. So it just dates it, and it isn't funny. I bet they're about to put in an old meme. Oh shit, what up? <clears throat> Dad, please. Oh. Anyway, changing the subject. Where to now? Wanna go to that goth store? Is there any indication that either of them would ever want to go to that goth store? You know who's gonna be at the goth store. Noah? Vampire dad. Vampire dad. Yes. You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as the anti-establishment despite having the exact representation of the establishment? I don't know what store you're talking about. You know, the one where you can buy all the chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements, the 70s and 80s? Mm. It's a hot topic. It is. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that time. Oh, that one. Vampire Dad is so living here. <laughs> it's so hot, darling. <clears throat> Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. <laughs> there it is. You can still kind of see the outline. Gross. They're so punk they don't even clean, clean up the vomit. I'm so proud. Speech. Amanda. Speech, speech. Speech. All right, speech. I'll do it if you stop chanting. Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate a historic moment that would forever shape History. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda and B. Acre had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. After begging her father to take her to dead Gotham Beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Kind of channeled Churchill by the end of it. Amanda has moved, she begins clapping, slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads, one of them also starts clapping, I bow my head! While Amanda busies herself looking at band t-shirts, I try to find something of interest to myself. Not much for a dad to look at in Dead Gotham Beyond. <laughs> Except for another dad. Mm. Peruse the band t-shirts, look at ironic mugs, check the clearance bin for hot deals. I feel like we'd be into band t-shirts. For sure. I barely know any of these bands. Cannibal Bone Party doesn't seem like music I enjoy, <laughs> but they must be really happy that a retail outlet is carrying their merchandise. I hope their parents are really proud of them. Look, this is very important to me. I overhear a stifled argument over at the cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. I just don't know what to tell you, dude. I just work here. Listen, when I bought this online at the website, it said the blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly had the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Oh my god, insufferable. Do you want a coupon? I mean, I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. Classic. 
I see. Well, it would seem that I've outstayed my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. Your superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Smoke bomb turns into a bat, flies away. Whatever, dude. The man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails trailing behind him. I can't tell if they're Victorian-inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda trots up to me with a t-shirt in hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Hey, Deadtron 5000. She obviously wants something. Yes, I'll buy it for you. <laughs> You're such a pushover. Wow, that was easy, thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops a shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. I love your hair. The cashier says nothing and rings Amanda up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. Wow, she sounds like a delight. So, what was that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard, I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. She hands Amanda her bag and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. Quite a brief encounter with that dad. It was a flash dad sighting. <laughs> uh, so, we've seen Victorian vampire dad. We've chatted to who is now number one dad. We've been ranking dads each time. Irish dad. Numero uno dad. <laughs> Yeah, he's pretty cool. He's pretty cool. And he's also a father figure, not yeah, just a that's father. Nice. And he'd like be well read. Well read, he Smart. seemed really nice, yeah. And plus, you know what? I can see them as a couple. Totally. Totally. Because our dad is kind of nerdy, and that dad resp like that dad brought out the best parts of our dad. True. Which was caring about his daughter mm -hmm. and actually having kind of a smooth little pickup line there at the end about they ever catch that rye and he and he appreciated Ew. that yeah i'm 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 big on the dad irish dad bad yeah, wagon okay. are you i feel like this Muso house dad? doesn't look like our furniture would like meld no 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 we'd burn this house to the ground we'd just move into here okay right yeah okay. i feel like this is just laziness that you cannot be bothered to decorate yourself if someone else is decorated and i'm sure that guy has a housekeeper on a school teacher's salary come on for um, sure. He'd have, lots of, he'd have lots of like leather Chesterfield lounges. Lots of them. And lots of books. Lots of books and lots of leather lounges. Yeah. Uh, and just, and how and how would he say, you know, welcome to my humble abode. Welcome to my humble abode. See, this is why we need to hook up with Irish dad. <laughs> uh, my favorite dad. Guys, who's your favorite dad so far? Let us know in the comments. If you want to see more of these videos, let us know as well. I'm Steph. I'm Nick. We don't say that at the end, do we? No, but I think we should now dab. I'm not even doing it right. It's that. I don't even know what dabbing is. I think it's a dance and move. And I've seen sometimes it's like um, a lazy dab is kind of like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah. That kid did one in here. Oh, gosh. Like, I am the sad, pathetic old person now. Yes, you are.